Welcome to this video to introduce students of Farringdon Community College to Google Classroom. We're just going to quickly run through how to sign in and use some of the core functions of this platform uh, that we'll be using towards the end of this academic year and through next academic year as well. Uh, firstly, just accessing it. This can be accessed through any browser. Uh, but just be aware that if you do have your own independent private Google account, which many people do, you will need to sign out of it first. So when you're on the Google homepage, in the top right hand corner, you'll be able to see if you're signed in or not. So just sign out first. And then you can do a quick web search to take you directly to Google Classroom. Once you've clicked onto Google Classroom, you'll be prompted to sign in. So to do that, to begin with, you put your username, which is the same you used to log onto the computers at school, followed by the rest of your email address, which, following our recent email address update, is for you as a student at student.farringdonlearningtrust.org. When you press next, you'll be prompted to put your password in, and this password will be the same as when you log on to the computers at school. So once you've put your school email address and school password in, this is the screen that you'll be welcomed with when you first enter Google Classroom. Uh, this student, which is a test student account so that you can see what the students would see, um, has been invited to join two classes and you'll have many more classes all the way across your screen. So you simply, to begin with, press join in order to join those classes. So that will add you to the class and add you to all the resources and work that your teacher will do and it will take you straight into what's called the class stream. So we can go back by pressing the three lines in the top left of the page, go back to our classes and press join. So that then makes us part of that class and allows us to complete work alongside the rest of that class. So once you've joined your class this is what it will look like and this is called the class stream. This is where you can access all of your work, all of the work that the teachers have set, as well as any resources. So you can see recently I've run a lesson and I've posted the video and I could just click that to re-watch that lesson back and go over anything I haven't um, got the first time round, as well as a copy of the resource from that lesson. Across the top, you access that by pressing stream, but we can also press classwork to see what work is due. If I wanted to check all of the work that was due, I would go to these three lines in the top left hand corner and press to do. And that will give me my to do list. So I can see all of the work that I've not done yet, all the work that's due tomorrow and any future work that's due in. Now I'm going to work on this question five for my English class. So I have up here the task and the instructions um, that I've put there. And you also have the place that you'll be asked to complete that work. So you just click on this link here and it will take you into what's called the Google Doc. Now it's really easy uh, sometimes for things to look a little bit different. Say if you were to accidentally delete the Google Doc by pressing that X button, it's really easy to bring it back because you just press make a copy and that will get that Google Doc back for you so you'll always be able to access and complete the work. So I've got my task, I've got my instructions, and now I'm ready to start this piece of work. So I could go to this, just click on it, and that will take me straight to what's called a Google Doc, which is the equivalent of a Word document um, in other operating systems. And the task has been laid out for me here, and then I can just type and complete my task. So with this, is a, this being a creative writing task, we could start this off. So this task asked me to start off. They have been on the river for days searching for a new home. They were lost and did not know where to go. And you'll get little notifications the first time you use it just with hints and you can just press got it to make those go away. So we can imagine that we finished this piece of work now um, and we can just close it um, because, because Google Drive works in the cloud and works and syncs everything and backs everything up once you've done some work, it saves it automatically. So we can close that tab. And if I'm happy that it's done and finished, I can press hand in. Or if I wanted to upload additional resources, I just have to press this button and follow the on-screen instructions. But for now, I'm happy to hand this in and I've finished this piece of work. 
So now I've submitted that piece of work, my teacher will have that available to Mark to give you some feedback so that you know what you've done really well and what you could do a little bit better. Okay, the final part of this brief introduction to Google Classroom is, is how to take part in online lessons. Because we've successfully logged in using our school email address and password, we have found the work that we've been set through the to-do list or the class stream, We've completed that work online through Google Docs, and we've then submitted that work um, online and returned that to our teacher so we can get some feedback and guidance about how to improve. So you'll see at the moment, at the top of the class screen, in this big blue box, there's nothing for us to click. But in a moment, because this lesson, this lesson is not scheduled to start yet, a link will appear. Once that link appears, you can click that, and that will take you directly to your class's lesson. Okay. So we're ready to join our lesson now, and you can see that the teacher has enabled the Google Meet link. So now that's there, we're able to join the online lesson. All you have to do is just click on that link and it will take you straight to what is called Google Meet. If you're accessing this on an iPad or a phone or a tablet or equivalent, you may need to download and install the Google Meet app, which is the equivalent of Zoom and other video conferencing applications. So this lesson's ready to go because now there is a link at the top of the page and I can just click that to take me straight to the lesson. You'll get some notifications asking you if you are ready to join the lesson and to use the camera, which you need to allow. And as soon as you're ready to join the lesson, you just press join now. And that then means that, that you're, means you're in the lesson and ready to go. In the final part of this introduction, I just wanted to briefly show you what Google Classroom looks like if you use the app on either a tablet or a phone. If you're working on a tablet, you can still access Google Classroom through a web browser. And on balance, I'd suggest that's the best way to use Google Classroom, particularly through the browser Chrome. However, if you've used the app, you sign in with your school username and password, and you'll be presented with either the classes you've been invited to or the classes you've already joined. Whether you're on the web version or the app, if your classes are not there, it's because you haven't signed in with your school email address and password. The app may automatic, automatically jump in with your pre-existing uh, Google Mail or Google Mail account. So there are my classes. They're there, ready to go. I know my English teacher is getting ready to start the lesson. That's due to start in 10 minutes. So I press on my English class. At the moment, in the top right of the screen, there's just an eye icon. Um, but as I get to about five minutes before the lesson, my teacher will switch on the Google Meet link and that will then allow me to jump into the lesson. So if I've been waiting there, I just pull the page down, refresh, refresh the page and in the top right hand corner, a little camera icon appears. I then press that and because I will have already installed the Google Meet app, I just press that and that will take me straight into that online lesson. Within the app, in the same way as on the, as on the web version of Google Classroom, uh, you can see all of the work in the class stream. Click on any task that you need to complete. You can also see where to complete the work by following the instructions, uh, as well as accessing the documents that you are to complete the work on, just by pressing the grey arrow at the bottom of the screen um, and following the links on the screen that are just there in front of you. Uh, as we come back out, we can return to the class stream, see all of the resources. So, for example, here we can see a link to the video of the lesson that I ran recently, as well as a resource that you can access. And in the same way as on the web version, you can access the to-do list so that you can see any tasks that you still need to complete. And all you have to do is press on those and it'll take you straight to those tasks for any of your classes. Pressing the arrow, the lines in the corner, compress classes again, and I'm back to my home page just where I started from. For this video, we've gone through how to sign into Google Classroom, how to see and check what work that you have set. And you can see that within the single class stream here, or by clicking in the top left corner and pressing to do. We've seen how to join our classes and we've also seen how to join online live lessons when they're running. This should mean now, because we've shown you how to access and complete work and join live lessons, that you're set up and ready to go with all of the core functions and features of Google Classroom. 
Uh, we really think this is going to be a great platform, not just during these strange and uncertain times uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, but as we move forward as a school and as we move forward as a whole school community. We hope you enjoy using it and we hope that you see and can benefit from having this platform and all of these resources in one place together. If you have any questions, do direct those to your tutors in the first instance and they will answer your questions and if they can't, they will make sure that we get good answers to you as we continue to move on.